Elizabeth Olsen established herself as a force to be reckoned with after landing the role of Wanda Maximoff in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But there's a lot more to her than just superpowers and sitcom parodies. Keep watching to discover the truth of this talented actress. Even if you're not the biggest Marvel movie fan, there's still a good chance you know that Elizabeth Olsen is the younger sister of Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. But there's more to the Olsen family than these three sisters. They also have an older brother named James Trent, as well as a younger half-brother named Jake, and a half-sister named Courtney. Their parents, Jarnett and David, got divorced in 1996, and Courtney and Jake are their dad's kids with his second wife, Mackenzie. Elizabeth talked about growing up with her siblings during a January 2021 appearance on the British talk show Lorraine as she noted, "...it's definitely not a lot of people's average childhood. But I don't know if any of us look back at our childhoods and think of any of them as average." That may be true, but not all of us grew up with twin sisters who were among the most famous children in show business. So Elizabeth Olsen is definitely unique in that regard. So I guess it was just unique to, to my experience and my sister's experience. You might think that Elizabeth Olsen's mom and dad were hardcore stage parents, considering that her sisters got into show business from such a young age. But apparently that wasn't the case. As Olsen explained to The Guardian in 2012, "...my parents had very little to do with my sister's job, really. At least not after getting them that first job. They always did what they could to hook them up with the right people to handle things. But they never pretended they could do it well themselves." She also noted, "...my sisters run their own thing now. They have since they turned 18." Olsen also talked about this topic in a 2011 interview with Nylon, as she explained that her parents aren't the type of people to force their kids to do something that isn't right for them. As she put it, "...what's really cool about my parents is that they've always been the same way with every person in our family. If you change your idea of what you want to do, it doesn't matter as long as you give it your all." Getting into show business can be pretty difficult. Of course, it might be a little easier if your older siblings happen to be super famous. And in fact, Elizabeth Olsen even once appeared on Full House the ABC sitcom that her sisters famously starred on from 1987 to 1995. Specifically, she showed up in the series finale, entitled Michelle Rides Again Part 2, in an uncredited part as Girl with Flowers. And that wasn't the only time that she worked alongside her sisters, as she nabbed some minor roles in the Olsen twins' many straight-to-video productions. She talked about the experience with The Guardian in 2012, quipping, "...oh, I really got to exercise the acting muscles there." You can't imagine the awesome thespian demands on the kid playing girl in car and how the West was fun. And my biggest scene was getting bubblegum out of my hair. It's about 60 videos or something. Is that right? It's crazy. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And then they would rope you into a couple. Yeah, it was and like after school care. Oh, really? Yeah. According to Elizabeth, she never landed any job because of her sisters, although she did note, I could have pulled a few strings through them, but I never needed to. Elizabeth Olsen may be a big star nowadays, but she almost left the entertainment business altogether before she was even an adult. As it turned out, an early rejection nearly scared her off for good. One of the hit movies of 2001 was the family action flick Spy Kids, which featured a couple of child actors in its lead roles. And if things had gone a little differently, Elizabeth Olsen could have been one of those actors. But she didn't quite put in the effort that was needed to land the gig. During an audition for the film, she lied to the director by telling him that she had read the script. But as she recalled to Nylon, "...I hadn't. It looked like the biggest thing I'd seen in my life." Not only did she not get a job offer, she was also reprimanded by her ballet teacher for her casual work ethic, which led her to tell her dad that she wanted to stop acting, even though she'd been to only four auditions by that point. Her dad was willing to accept her early retirement, but he wanted her to think it through. As she recalled, he was like, "...okay, write a list weighing the pros and cons and make your own decision." I was 10. Nowadays, Elizabeth Olsen has no problem being associated with her famous sisters, but there was a time when she thought that a name change might help her stand out on her own. As she confessed to the Sydney Morning Herald in 2012, "...in high school, I thought I'd go by the name Elizabeth Chase, which is my middle name. I knew I was always going to be introduced as the sister of, and I have no control over it." Olsen also thought that using her middle name as a professional last name would be the right way to go. As she explained to The Sun, "...I couldn't walk in a room without everyone already having an opinion. The thing about nepotism is the fear that you don't earn or deserve the work." But she eventually had a change of heart. As she told The Sun, "...once I started working, I was like, I love my family. I like my name. I love my sisters. Why would I be so ashamed of that? It's fine now." Olsen's successful acting career is a lesson in perseverance. If you asked her, she'd probably tell you that you can't give up on your dream just because it didn't start the way that you'd hoped. She has first-hand knowledge of that, as she wasn't accepted into her first-choice college of Brown University. But she didn't give up on getting an education in her chosen craft, as she ended up attending New York University instead. Things didn't seem to be going any better when she was rejected for a production of Shakespeare in the Park, which, as she told Vanity Fair, was the first job she didn't get that she really wanted. 
But of course, just because things weren't going Olsen's way when she started out doesn't mean that things didn't work out eventually. Other opportunities were out there, and she was willing to go after them. Because she didn't book the Shakespeare in the Park gig, she was able to be cast in the 2011 indie flick Martha Marcy May Marlene. As a woman who escapes from a cult, the role earned her a series of awards from critics groups and helped set her career in motion. What happened? Are you okay? Um, I have to go. Um, I, I can't stay gone, so. Um. Before Olsen left school behind, she decided to take a semester abroad in Russia to study at the O'Neill's National Theatre Institute Moscow Art Theatre. The program's website notes that students are offered daily movement and acting classes, which are complemented with design, voice, Russian language, and Russian theater history. A part of the Eugene O'Neill Theater Center, this developmental theater proudly claims the likes of Meryl Streep, Jennifer Garner, and Michael Douglas among its alumni. For Olsen, it was an experience that may have helped her develop the Russian accent she adopted when she started playing Wanda Maximoff. Her time in Russia also apparently helped her learn how to swear in Russian, which she demonstrated during an appearance on Conan in September 2018. And they all, and they combine them all together like Tourette's. They go, Pizzets na hoi bliet, and they're just like screaming. They're yelling female region. No, yeah. Olsen also admitted during that interview to enjoying vodka, which might have loosened her tongue enough to use those Russian swear words while abroad. Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen may have been very famous actors when they were younger, but as they grew up, they decided that they were more passionate about fashion than they were about performing. They've put out various clothing lines over the years, and one in particular has a close connection to their siblings. First hitting the market in 2007, the line was named after Elizabeth and their brother James. You might expect that the brand would embrace the twin's signature bohemian style, but it's actually a little different than that. As the brand's website explains it, Beginning with the design concept focused on the wardrobe for the modern woman, Elizabeth and James has become a multi-category lifestyle brand rooted in effortless dressing and vintage inspiration. Elizabeth and James embodies a relaxed approach to dressing with a playful and sophisticated sensibility. In March 2020, the brand thrilled fashionable fans when the clothing line was released at Kohl's. The collection offered more than 150 styles. It might have something for you if you've been looking for items with a fresh vibe or something cool and casual, or even a piece that could be considered both feel-good and fun. They surely have the perfect thing for your next outfit of the day. Elizabeth Olsen isn't only focused on her acting career, as she also makes time to give back and do what she can to help others. Her charitable efforts have included supporting such organizations as Oxfam, the Epidermolysis Bellosa Medical Research Foundation, and Equality Now, which is an international human rights organization dedicated to women's and girls' rights. In 2016, Olsen attended Equality Now's third annual fundraising gala, Make Equality Reality, alongside other such charitable celebrities as Melanie Griffith, Jane Fonda, Aubrey Plaza, and Mae Whitman. In 2017, Olsen talked with InStyle about another well-meaning organization that she's gotten behind, The Latitude Project. Those who participate in the project aim to improve the living conditions of others by partnering with different communities every year on a big project that could be something like constructing a school or improving access to latrines. Olsen worked with the group in Nicaragua, which he learned was the second poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. Latitude Project founders Jen and Alana Tynan were working with local communities in the country that needed assistance with infrastructure support. As Olsen revealed, I went with them to visit these areas and ended up volunteering in a school to repair desks and update the athletic equipment. Olsen also joined them in San Juan del Sur, an area that didn't have any electricity, so they distributed solar lights. Clearly, she gets a lot of fulfillment from her charitable work, and it sounds like plenty of other people are benefiting. Elizabeth Olsen can certainly consider herself to be a successful Hollywood star. Not only has she been in massive projects on both the big and small screens, she's also raked in a lot of cash from all that work. Just how rich is she? According to CelebrityNetWorth.com, her fortune sits at $11 million. That's certainly nothing to sneeze at, though it's nowhere near what her sisters are sitting on, as Mary-Kate and Ashley reportedly have a combined net worth of $500 million. That's obviously ridiculously impressive. No matter how you slice it, the Olsen name is a valuable one. While there's obviously a significant gap when it comes to who's banking what in the family, everyone is doing pretty darn well for themselves. That's why, when you add all three siblings' fortunes together, the total unsurprisingly puts them on the list of the richest celebrity sisters. Other such wildly wealthy siblings that they can consider their peers include the likes of Venus and Serena Williams, Beyonce and Solange Knowles, Bella and Gigi Hadid, and the Kardashian Jenners. As for the Olsons, we have no doubt that they'll remain on this list for years to come. Considering that Mary-Kate and Ashley are bringing in big bucks with their fashion work, and we have faith that Elizabeth's fortune will only grow as her career continues to hum along. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.